This example problem deals with a car starting from rest. Uh, the car has a uniform acceleration. That acceleration lasts for seven seconds. And during that time, the car travels 42 meters in a straight line, uh, kind of illustrated by this diagram. So we're initially at rest, so VI equals zero. We're moving for seven seconds and we cover 42 meters and there's some final velocity of the car at the end of, uh, of this distance. So can we use the kinematic equations? The answer is yes, because the acceleration is uniform, that means constant. So <clears throat> if we make a little graph of what's happening here, uh, for the case of uniform acceleration, the graph of velocity versus time is a straight line. It is a straight line. And this 42 meters is equal to the average velocity multiplied by the time of seven seconds. This is distance equals rate times time. We're not given the average velocity, however, um, but we can make use of the concepts here for uniform acceleration. For the case of uniform acceleration, we have the situation where the average velocity is this point I've t attempted to mark x here, halfway between my initial velocity and the final velocity, in this case halfway between zero and v final. So instead of average velocity, I put in here this calculation, one half v final plus zero. Uh, you may have to make your own graph and convince yourself of this, but it is true the average velocity is one half of the final velocity plus the initial velocity. For this problem, the initial velocity is zero. So if we uh, work this out, there's only one unknown. So you ought to pause and work this out yourself. Okay, welcome back. So you multiply both sides by two, you get 84. You divide both sides by seven, and you find the final velocity is 12 meters per second. Final velocity is 12 meters per second. What else could we uh, ask ourselves? Well, what is the value of the acceleration? What's the value of the acceleration? And we could use the following equation. The distance traveled in this straight line is equal to the initial uh, velocity multiplied by time plus one half a t squared. A is the acceleration and t is the elapsed time. Well, we have all these numbers. Uh, except a, but we can calculate that. So again, 42 meters is our distance. Zero is the initial velocity multiplied by the seven seconds. That's a term of zero. And then one half a, and then the seven seconds squared. In this equation, make sure you don't forget to square the time. Um, but again, pause this, use your calculator, and uh, welcome back. You should have accelerations 1.714 meters per second squared. And um, I'm going to use, I, I think I'm going to use this uh, number, so I kept four digits rather than rounding off to three. Um, so there's another way to determine the acceleration. Another of the kinematic equations is the final velocity is initial velocity plus a times t. So let's see what we obtain when we use the final velocity of 12 from part a equals zero. Again, initial velocity is zero. A and seven seconds and again not surprising we get consistent answers here so at sometimes in kinematic equations problems you have two choices for the equation that you might want to use um, what's the average velocity is the average velocity six meters per second well I, if you've been listening perhaps you'll uh, realize that this is kind of a quick question uh, if our final velocity is 12, then the average velocity is this calculation, one half v final plus v initial. v final is 12, initial is zero, so 12 in here divided by two, that's pretty much six. So yeah, as long as our acceleration is constant, we will have this uh, ability to calculate using one half times the, the quantity v final plus v initial. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, pose another question. So we found that the uh, average velocity was just one half of the final velocity. Uh, is the position at 3.5 seconds, that's half of the time, remember the time interval is seven seconds, is that position half of the total distance 
42 meters is how far we're traveling and at half the time do we cover half the distance? You ought to pause and think about this question just a little bit. Okay, welcome back. So 3.5 seconds, half of the total time, 21 is half of 42, seems reasonable, half and half, but it's not reasonable. Let's see what happens. Well, if we calculate using this uh, S equals V initial time plus one half AT squared, using a time of 3.5 seconds, one half, 1.714 for the acceleration, 3.5 seconds squared, we find that we only cover 10.5 meters in the first 3.5 seconds, we only cover 10.5 meters out of the total 42 meters of travel. Um, what about the last 3.5 seconds? The last 3.5 seconds. Well, in that time, we're covering the remaining distance. So 42 minus 10.5, we've covered 31.5 meters during the last 3.5 seconds. Why is that reasonable? Well, if you remember here, we're accelerating. We're accelerating, so I come back to this graph. During the first 3.5 seconds, we covered 10.5 meters. That'd be the area under the curve here. During the last 3.5 seconds, we cover the area under the curve just from the 3.5 to the 7 second mark. We're moving faster during this last 3.5 seconds. So in the same time, we're moving faster and we consequently cover more distance. So be careful on your uh, jumping to conclusions. In constant acceleration problems, the average velocity is useful as half of the final velocity, well, if the initial velocity is zero, I should say that. Um, and then for the concept of distance, you cannot uh, do a quick calculation that half the time will deliver half the distance. The object is speeding up. During the last half of the time, it's moving much faster than during the first half of the motion. So hope you uh, refreshed yourself a little bit on uh, kinematics, constant acceleration problems. If you'd like some more problems, uh, they're listed at these websites, physics problems, astronomy problems. Both these have short lectures as well. Um, feel free to go there and look at the list of videos that are available. These sites are free. There's no registration. Um, and if you enjoy these YouTube videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And keep uh, practicing and ask your instructor questions.